Hey, it's Steve Lindsley. Welcome back to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I turned some five-quarter rough sawn cherry into this project. I needed a cherry buffet for my dining room, and it was a good. I had a good time, opportunity to make one, so it came out very nice. Um, uh, the video, I'm going to show you how I made the project. It's uh, probably a longer video than I would like it to be, but it was a big project. It's taken me um, a few months working on weekends to get the thing finished. So uh, I cut a lot of video out, but it's still probably longer than I would like it to be. I did use some different editing techniques. I tried to do some side-by-side, -side, maybe some picture-in-picture -picture to try to uh, shorten up the video. So I'd be interested in your feedback on that, whether it's uh, distracting, whether it was okay, or whether it caused no harm to the, to the video. Uh, if you could have any thoughts on that, please leave them in the comments down below. Um, I'd appreciate that. So let's uh, go ahead and get into the video, and I'll show you how I made this cherry buffet. Well, unfortunately, I lost several video clips of how I laid out the stock, laid out the parts on the, on the rough stock, and cut them to size. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and pick up here where I start uh, milling the stock with the joiner and then continue on with the planer. The frame of our buffet is going to be a frame and panel construction, so what I needed was some panels. So I decided not to use uh, solid wood. Uh, you got the whole wood movement thing and all that going on. So what I did was I took two pieces of quarter inch birch plywood uh, and I glued them together and we're going to go ahead and put some veneer on it. So what veneer I'm using is this is a little piece. It's some uh, cherry veneer that uh, has paper backing on it. So it's, uh, it's easy to work with and, it, and it's, um, uh, it's easy to cut and doesn't chip and stuff. So here's one of the, the panels. I got uh, contact cement. I'm just using this, uh, you can see it there, just uh, this weld, weld bond, uh, weld wood, uh, contact cement. So I put two coats of contact cement on the on the uh, plywood and I put one coat on a piece of veneer I'm going to put on it. So we're going ahead and ready to bond these two pieces together. So what I do is um, put those on there and I put a couple of spacers on there because once these two pieces come together I mean they're stuck. You really you really can't do anything with it. So I want to before I do that I want to make sure that the uh, Everything's going in the right direction. You can see in this one, hopefully, uh, that the arch goes, uh, this piece of wood goes to the left. So I want to make sure that my veneer has the same orientation, which it does. So I'm good to, I'm good to go with that. And I put these little spacers on here so that we can keep the, everything separated. And I just eyeball the, uh, eyeball it so it looks like there's even, even, uh, piece of veneer sticking out all the way around. Uh, the veneer is oversized so it's easier to fit onto here. So we'll just take this first spacer out and let that come to rest on the wood. We'll take the one out of this end, press it down a little bit, and we'll take a, we'll take a J roller and, and uh, go over it to push out any of the uh, air bubbles and to get it to get it to bond. So we'll just do a, a light rub on this now. All right, got it all the sticks. So what we want to do is trim off the uh, excess. So I'm just going to use the utility knife to trim off the excess or the 
ends and sides. There's one in. Alright, we'll do the sides now. So really the first time I've used this paperback veneer and it uh, really is nice to nice to work with. All right, there's that. We'll flip it over and hit it with the J roller again. And that's all there is of that. There's our uh, our one of our end panels um, veneered on both sides. Uh, I got four of these this size, and I got four bigger ones for the back panels. So we're good to go with those. Here's the stock all milled up. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time yesterday with the drum sander, uh, getting everything to the uh, down to three quarter inch thickness. Uh, I took about boards back to the joiner and rejointed one edge so when we go to the table saw we got a nice square edge. Uh, it's important to start with uh, flat square stock so uh, we're in good shape there. What I'm going to do next is uh, I got my rough cut diagram, uh, rough cut plan so I'm going to take it to the table saw. I put in a rip blade and we're going to rip these things to uh, proper width and then we'll cut them to length and uh, that'll be a rough rough cut and then we'll uh, start fine tuning it down to the uh, to the size that we need. So. Um, but we're going to go ahead now and cut these things to uh, length, uh, making sure that all the styles are the same length and the rails are all the same length. So I will use a stop block on, a, on the miter gauge to make sure we cut everything to the proper length. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Once that's done, we can go ahead and start on some joinery. Um, what I have here is a couple of the door, the in styles. Uh, again, I have those marked with a cabinet maker's triangle there so that we can keep everything in proper orientation. Uh, the idea is to groove the inside of the triangle piece, uh, but just to make sure I put a, <laughs> a mark in there. So I've been known to groove the wrong side of these One. things. All right, well, now that we got all the grooves cut in all of our pieces, the next thing to do is to cut a tenon on the end of them that'll. Uh, um, on the end of the rails so it'll fit into the styles and we can make our frames. The tendon is 3 eighths of an inch long and it's sized to fit into the groove. Uh, so this is my test piece and it's one of the uh, styles or one of the rails so you can see that it goes in there, it goes nice tight fit but not too tight and it's nice and even on, on uh, both sides so it won't have to do a lot of sanding on that, on that piece. So. Here's our end panels. I just have them fit together. Uh, there's no glue on any of it yet. I need to take them apart, uh, finish sanding the, uh, the panels uh, before we put it back together. And one thing I need to do is fill these, uh, these grooves that we cut down here at the bottom. I'm going to fill them with a, a plug, uh, but we're also going to taper this leg. Um, so these, these side legs will be, and the front legs will be tapered a little bit, so it'll give it a little... Uh, lighten it up a little bit and it won't look quite so clunky. Uh, the back legs, you know, because they're in the back, nobody see them, we're not going to taper those. But Well, here's our back panel all dry assembled. Um, it, I had to make some adjustments to the width of the panels to get everything to come together. They were a little too wide, so I trimmed them down a little bit. They're, um, I got everything just lightly clamped together just to make sure everything uh, the joints are all tight, which they are. All right, the next thing we want to do is make some grooves in the bottom of our, inside of our panels for the bottom shelf that will fit in a the groove there. Um, I did this over in the table saw with a uh, three-quarter inch dado blade, but uh, running the, the feet against the, uh, the fence, but obviously that would be, wouldn't work out so well. So what I did was I took a, a board and I carpet taped it to the, flush to the bottom of the, the feet and then I run this this board along the fence and was able to cut that groove. Um, so that worked out pretty well for those those two. The problem is with this panel, the big the back panel, which is about not quite 16 inches long, 
uh, we needed, I didn't have a board uh, that long that I wanted to uh, use for it. So what I did was I ripped off a four inch piece of the MDF I, I'm building this project on uh, and I'm going to use the factory edge um, is to run along the fence as I cut that groove. The only thing uh, I got to do is make sure that I cut it on the inside so I got the the back of the panel here, uh, the outside marked here. So uh, what I need to do is go ahead and uh, carpet tape or double stick tape this thing to to the bottom of here uh, and then we can take it over to the table saw and cut the groove in the bottom of it. So that'll uh, it'll that way it'll all match up with the with the other two sides there. What we need to do is cut some holes for some shelf pins uh, to hold the middle shelf. What I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this jig I have here, and first thing I do I have a piece that fits in my dado, uh, and then I have a, a piece of MDF cut so that the the first hole here is nine inches from the top of that dado to the center of the hole. What I want is I want the uh, I want the holes to be seven eighths of an inch in from that edge. So I'll just put that on there. Like that will measure over seven eighths and make a little mark. All right. These holes, these pins, you might not be able to see it, but they have a um, centers marked uh, uh, both ways. So. All I got to do is line that up with that uh, mark I made at seven eighths, and those pins will all be in the seven eighths um, position. So what I'm going to do is take my drill. This jig comes with a drill bit, so once you set the stop collar, the hole is uh, three eighths of an inch deep. So what I'm going to do is drill the first one, and then just to make sure nothing moves, I'm going to put this little collar in there or that little pin in there that hold everything in place so then I can just drill the rest of them. And that's pretty much all there is to that. So we got the uh, Holes drilled on this side, so I'll just uh, flip this thing in for end, and uh, we'll drill them on the other side, and we'll be good. Well, another week's gone by, and we're ready to continue work on our cherry buffet. Uh, what I need to do is make the top a middle shelf, which is adjustable, and the bottom shelf. So I should have enough here to do that. Right, so There's no way I can get this joiner or this board through my joiner. It's just way too wide. It's 12 inches wide. It would barely fit through my planer as it is. So I'm going to have to. Split this thing down the middle, which is not the worst thing, uh, worst thing because there is a check on the end of it. So I'll split it down the middle in that, at that check, and then we'll just glue it back together, and it, it, won't, uh, it won't really be a noticeable joint when we do that. So. All right, well, here's our bottom panel, bottom shelf. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to join these uh, panels together all pretty much the same, so this is only one I'll show probably, but uh, I'm going to use biscuits to join them just to keep things in alignment. Um, so I made some marks on here. I got four marks for biscuits, so I'm just going to turn this one around. And I got my uh, biscuit joiner set so that it's about, it cuts about in the middle. So it, it's probably not exact, but it's close enough as long as we cut from the same side or cut the biscuits from the same side. So let's go ahead and cut a few of these biscuits and see how we do here. thing important on those uh, uh, the biscuit joiners to make sure you keep it flat to the the fence flat to the board and that um, you cut the biscuits from the same side so let me finish cutting these and then we'll put these things uh, put these things together well after I got the uh, biscuit slots cut I just went ahead and uh, spread some regular tight bond glue on the on the two surfaces and then uh, put in the number 20 biscuits. Uh, it was a pretty straightforward uh, process. Um, now once you got the biscuits in, just went ahead and put some clamps on it and clamped it up till the glue chance to buy and we're good to go.
It's time to trim the uh, bottom panel to length. Uh, I got it flipped upside down, so this is the bottom uh, of the panel. I'm just going to use my jigsaw to uh, to trim it. Uh, I got a line drawn here. I just used my combination square and drew a, drew a line across the square to the edge. And both edges are parallel, so it's it's a it's a square corner. I did a pretty decent job cleaning that up. It's not exactly straight, and if this was a piece that was going to be exposed, I would, we would take a router bit and we'd clean that up. But this, this actually, the group, the dado it slips in is a quarter inch deep, so we don't really need to mess with this. It's going to be covered up by the, covered up by the dado. So, All right, we're ready to go ahead and fit this in here. So we just get it into the, get it into the dados. Slide it in. We got a good fit there. There. That was a nice fit. It's a nice tight fit. Uh, well, I used the Craig pocket hole jig to cut some pocket holes for the face frames. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. I just used the little mobile version of it there with the held on with a clamp. Um, I did film doing that, unfortunately. Uh, my iPhone that I used went a little crazy on and didn't record it, so I just kind of reviewing it here. You just use the uh, the jig and the step bit to uh, to cut the holes and you're good to go. All right, well I've started to put together the face frame. Um, it couldn't really be easier. I've got the top piece put on. This is the bottom part. I've tapered the uh, inside edges of the leg with a uh, I just used a bandsaw to rough it out. Then I used a block plane to clean it up to what we wanted. So I made a mark on the inside of the style where the top of the shelf was so that I want the I want this edge even with the top of the shelf. So what we do is we take this handy clamp here that uh, keeps everything lined up. I'm going to get it out here a little bit. So we'll put this on here, making sure that we're on our mark. Which we are. All right. We're using uh, one quarter inch fine thread screws. Uh, the screws come in coarse and fine, finer for hardwood and coarses for uh, softwood. So and these are self-tapping, so we don't need to drill any more holes. So we just go ahead and put that in here. There we go. That's pretty much all it is of that. The wood is the same thickness, so that joint's nice and even on the front and on the back side. So. Well, we got the face frame finished. Um, I went ahead and put the drawer dividers in there. I just used pocket screws to uh, to screw those into the two two rails there. Uh, for the opening, um, I wanted 13 and 3 quarter inches, so I just cut that little spacer, and that's what I used to uh, space the drawers out when I put those on there so that leaves the uh, about a 23 inch drawer in the middle. We do need to put some glue blocks underneath these uh, this front shelf because it's a little springy there so once we get that done and get the thing flipped up on its back we'll glue a couple of glue blocks underneath there and, and uh, firm that up so that'll that'll take care of that. Other than that it's um, it's looking pretty good. The, uh, we got to make the middle shelf and the top uh, and then the uh, framework inside for the drawers. All right, I got the biscuit joiner. I got it set for about a half an inch sent on the center cut. Um, with these one inch thick pieces, I, I could have put two biscuit in and probably should have, but uh, I'm just really trying to get the, uh, the faces to align so I don't have to try and keep this long panel aligned when I'm, uh, when I'm gluing it up. So I, I have some marks on each one, so we're going to go ahead and cut these biscuits. Okay, as I think I said in the other, uh, when I was gluing up the bottom panel, there's nothing magical about that. The only uh, thing we need to do is make sure that we keep the biscuit joiner flat, fence flat on the top, and that we cut all the biscuits from the same side. All right, well, there we go. 
one glued up panel. So it's never too early in a project to start thinking about the finish. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know I'm a believer in Charles Neal's blotch control. It's a water-based product. Uh, you can't really see the labels kind of shot on this one, but it's a, it's a water-based product, and it goes on. You let it dry, and then when you, stain, when you dye or stain over, it, it uh, minimizes the blotching to a very small amount. So the finish for our project is going to be a combination of a general finish is light brown, and the general finish is cinnamon. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix them one to one, uh, and that'll give us a kind of a medium brown kind of, or a, a lighter brown kind of color with a reddish hue to it, a reddish tint, which which really looks nice. The, to apply this, what you do is you you put on a wet coat, uh, wipe it back, uh, let it dry for a little while, and because it is water based, it's going to raise the grain. So we'll take some three twenty grit and we'll scuff the scuff the project, knock down the grain, and then you apply another coat and you let it dry overnight or whatever, six hours to overnight. And then after that you can go ahead and, and uh, uh, dye the piece. I'm going to dye the inside of the case before we put it together, so I need to get the blotch control on the parts so that uh, next weekend I can go ahead and put some put some dye on them. And then uh, once we get the dye on the interior pieces in the bottom shelf, then we can go ahead and start putting the case together. All right, we're ready to go. Got the gloves on. We got the dye in the container here. The, it's one of those things where you've got to work fast with this. So we're going to go ahead and the idea is just get a good coat, wet coat on it, uh, and then to wipe it off as quick as you can, uh, as quick as you can. So here we go. We're going to stay out of the, we're not going to put any dye on the rabbit or in the dado. Um, this is going to have glue on it, but this, this is not, but we're not, we're not going to put any dye on it. So We'll just go ahead and start with the uh, inside panels here and just kind of work our way around. We'll just take some paper towels and wipe. We don't want to wipe too hard because that preconditioner we put on there is water-based. So as soon as we put this water-based dye on there, it's going to start to soften it up a little bit. All right, well, there's our... There's one dyed panel, and it's pretty much the same for every, every other one. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of them. We'll let them dry overnight, and then uh, tomorrow we can go ahead and put this case together. Well, let's get caught up here. Uh, I've gone ahead and glued the case together. Uh, it came out uh, nice and square, just a matter of putting glue in the rabbits and then uh, gluing them together and, and uh, fitting the bottom shelf in so that it, uh, it went to the grooves and everything. So everything came out, everything came out uh, nice and square, so that's good. Uh, what we got to do next is... Um, make some frames for the inside for the drawer to, to ride on and also a top frame to uh, screw the top to and to uh, keep the drawers from tipping out as we pull them out. So. It's time to put some framework inside of our case so we have something to put the drawer slides on. Uh, what I've done is I've made a couple of pieces that go on the end that have a, a notch cut out. Let me move this piece, maybe you can see a little bit better. And it's got a notch cut in it which is the thickness of the board which is three quarters of an inch. I just have that screwed to the uh, screwed to the side of the case. I got one on the top, one on the bottom. And what we're going to do is uh, we'll put these long rail pieces on there, like that, and we'll screw those to the side uh, with some two-inch screws in through the edge there to hold hold that. And and then there's another one that goes in the another one that goes in the front here. So we put this one on. So we'll do the same thing with that. And what we're going to use this top piece for, uh, one is going to, we're going to drill up through the bottom of it to uh, screw the top to the top of the case. So I have it held down a, just a 32nd of an inch or something from the top edge of the case so that uh, the top will pull tight, tight to the case. So uh, what I need to do is make some uh, similar pieces for the bottom, bottom parts here. Uh, go right in here like this. So I'll get some, I got some more boards, so I'll cut some pieces for the bottom, and we'll screw those to the inside as well. 
And we're going to put the drawer slides on these so that the drawer will slide back and forth. So, Well, for the adjustable shelf and for the top, I, I treated the end pretty much the same way. I used the jigsaw to trim it to length. Uh, I put a straight edge on my line and I used a flush trim bit to uh, flush it up to the, to the line. Uh, it, it worked very well and cleaned up the end grain uh, very nice. So it worked out pretty good. It's time to route the cold molding that's going to go underneath the top on our on our case. Uh, what I have is I got a piece of cherry that's uh, two inches wide, three quarters thick, and it's about 62 inches long or so, which is longer than the longest dimension on a case. So what we're going to do is we're going to route a cold molding, uh, one on each side. We'll do one on each side of the the piece, and then we'll rip it off at the at the table saw. So what I have in the router is I have a half inch cove bit. So let's put this in here and we'll push the feather board up until we get about where we want it. And we want that to hold that tight against the fence. Or yeah, tight against the fence. So alright, I don't have the bit all the way up. I have it part of the way up. So we're going to make this thing in multiple passes and then what I'll do is uh, raise the bit each time. The bearing on the bit is set even with the original fence on the uh, on the router table. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, it's going to be a little noisy so I'll turn the sound down so it don't blast your ears out. So let's route some molding, molding for our case. Well, after several passes through the router, this is what we've uh, come up with. Hopefully you can uh, uh, get a little closer. You can see it there. Um, we got two profiles, one on each side, one there and one there, and we'll, uh, we'll rip that off at uh, three quarters of an inch. Uh, this is pieces longer than it needs to be, but not by much. So what I need to do is uh, cut a miter on this end and then measure it to length on the other side. Uh, so just to make sure that I'm cutting the miter in the right direction, uh, I've gone ahead and, let me find my pencil, I've gone ahead and drawn a line, this be the inside of the cabinet, and I just made a mark out, so we want, we want the miter to go in that direction, so I'm going to go over to the table saw, and, and uh, we'll move over there, and I'll show you, I got a little sled that I use to cut these miters, so we'll cut that first one, then we'll come back and measure the other end and cut, cut, the, uh, cut the second one. All right, I got some glue on the back of the uh, trim the, the molding. The only thing I could have done wrong is put it on the wrong side of the molding and glued it to the top which is not what we wanted to do. But uh, So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and I'm going to use my little test piece to line it up on the end, this end. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in this first first one here. Now the only thing we want to make sure also is we, don't, we nail it into the case side and not into the top. All right, we'll just kind of work our way along here. All right, well, that's all there was to that. that that'll uh, hold that on there until the glue dries. Now, the, the end pieces are actually the easy piece because there's, there's just a miter on one end, if you can see that there. But we have a miter on one end that'll match our piece here, and then it's just a flush cut at the back, so uh, it should be easy enough to make that, that piece. So. All right, we're closing in on the, finishing up the woodworking for the case part. Uh, the only thing I'll have left is three drawers after this. This is the top piece. Uh, it's flipped upside down. This is the front edge. What I need to do is route a half-inch round over on the edges and on across the front. So now that I make sure I got it in the right orientation with the, the bottom side up, uh, the front edge towards me, uh, and we can go ahead and route it. I have a half-inch round over bit in the... Uh, router that it's set to take a fairly light cut so we can knock off the corners uh, for the first uh, the first pass so it'll take us several passes to get to the um, profile that we want well, all right that that should do it we got a nice uh, round over there I got a few things I'll have to sand off I I only sanded through 120 so now that I've got this done I can take the uh, finished sander and some 180 and we'll uh, touch up the edges and uh, make it uh, make it ready for finish. So. Well for the last few minutes I've been fitting the drawers into the uh, into the case. Uh, I cut them off from one board uh, so that you get kind of an even grain match going across. I got them trimmed 
just so they just fit inside the inside the opening this way and I've trimmed them so that I got a sixteenth of an inch gap over here uh, when it's tight on this side so that way when I put them together uh, and get them fitted in there I'll have a thirty second on each on each side which will be enough the board will not won't expand this way so that that shouldn't be an issue there uh, I do need to trim some off the bottom or the top here to get that uh, to get a gap there um, so that if the front does swell up it doesn't bind in the in the case so but we'll do that after so I got well for the last few minutes I've been chiseling on away on our uh, tail boards here and the idea is to remove this area between the tails which will uh, correspond to where the pins go uh, I don't have a nice I don't do that many dovetails so it, it's uh, I don't have a really uh, expensive back saw to cut these to find these tails. Uh, I use a jig on the bandsaw uh, and it works pretty well so let me show you how I've done that. Alright well here we are at the bandsaw and this is the jig that I use to cut the dovetails on the, on the drawers that I'm working on. Here's my sample board. It's the same width as the, uh, as the sides of the drawers. Actually, this is the one that I laid it out on. And using this jig, you only need to lay it out on one uh, piece, and then the rest of them kind of fall into line after that. So, the slope on this is a uh, one and six, so it's it's uh, a pretty standard uh, dovetail angle. Uh, normally, I just take the uh, the bring the fence over, and we'd set the uh, we'll set the uh, piece in the jig and we'll set it for one of the sides so we'll just since I've already done that that there's one right there so how you do then is um, we just take and put the piece on here like this make a cut down to our scribe line or about to a scribe line and then if you flip it over you can make the cut on the other side and it'll make another um, cut for dovetail so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and make that cut all right well as you can see it there I'm not sure you can but there's our first cut down to almost to our scribe line so then what I do next is just take and reset it onto another another tail side so we move the fence over and we'll get it up to the top and set it for set it for this one. And then we'll just go ahead and make that cut then. Okay, I'll uh, get that so you can see a little bit better. Well, there you go, there, there's our, um, there would be our pins laid out on our, cut out on our, uh, or our tails, dovetails cut out. All right, well, that's how I use the bandsaw to, to find the, uh, to find the pins, or the tails on the, on our side of our drawers, so. Yeah, all I gotta do now is finish chiseling them out. Then we can go ahead and uh, mark the mark the pins, and uh, we're gonna use a router and clean out the most of the waste, and then sweeten it up with a chisel, and then hopefully we get a good fit on our dovetail. All right, we finished up the tails on our tail boards. We got the tails all cut and cleaned up and everything. Now it's time to make the pins on the uh, front piece, front of the board, uh, front of the drawer. So what I got, I've already done them on this side, so we're going to make it on, make them on this side. So we make sure that we got the proper orientation for everything. I'm going to check my, check my triangles. So that's pointing towards the front of the drawer, and that's the, this is pointing toward the front of the drawer. So that's the corner right here that we want to make. So, I want to make sure that we keep it in the proper orientation. I'm just going to use this, uh, use this hand plane here to kind of set the height 
so we can mark our mark our piece. So all right, we got that set. So we just take and put that back there. We make sure that we got our I got the corners all numbered. So this is a this is numbered with a four. So uh, we're just going ahead and make sure that we got everything even there. And then we're just going to go ahead and mark them with my marking knife, which looks a lot like an X-Acto knife with a number 11 blade, which is what it is. So let's go ahead and make the marks on here. All right, that part's done. Now I just take my pencil and I kind of color that in so I can see it a little bit better. All right, I have my piece in this contraption here, which is rather odd looking. Uh, what it is is two 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 by fours. Um, here's one two by four, and here's another one. And this one has a rabbit cut in it for some relief. What I did, uh, I have is a piece of three quarter inch MDF backing up my piece. The important thing is that the top of the piece be flush with the uh, jig. Uh, what a jig does is gives me uh, room for the, makes for a nice base for the router so it, it can, um, uh, it's not tippy or whatever. So all I do is just take the router and we're going to clean this out where we got the X's and then, then we can uh, sweeten them up with a chisel till we get them to fit. So uh, it fits into the, fits into the vise, it's holding it in there so Everything's nice and secure, so we're good to go. We need to go ahead and get the router. All right, well, I'm finished routing out that piece. Uh, I stayed as close to the lines as I could. One of them I got real close, so but I think it'll be fine. So I go ahead now and just take a chisel and uh, clean these up back to the line. All right, well I finished cleaning up our tails with the, or I mean our pins with the chisel. Um, just a matter of testing it. And chisel, test it some more until we get them to, to go together in a nice tight fit. Yeah, we give it a little persuasion here. And there we got a nice, uh, we got a nice tight fit on our dovetail. And All right, it's time to glue up this large drawer. Um, I've sanded the interior surfaces of the drawer and the plywood bottom to one, with 180 up to 180. I've cut a groove in the bottom portion of the sides in the front and the back that'll match the quarter inch birch plywood that I'm going to use for a bottom in this drawer and the other drawers too as, as, as it goes. The, uh, so they're all sanded, they're all ready to go. We're going to use some uh, liquid hide glue which will um, give me a lot of open time so it should be, uh, should be uh, plenty of time to get glue on all the pins and tails and get it glued up. Uh, I cut some calls that I'm going to use to uh, clamp up the side. These, these uh, these things match up with the dovetails, uh, and so when I put it on the outside and squeeze on the dovetail, it's going to squeeze the uh, squeeze the piece together. So that'll work out pretty well. Uh, so the next thing to do is get uh, get gloved up and get some glue ready with a brush, and we're going to go ahead and uh, glue up this uh, large drawer. I mentioned I use liquid high glue to put these drawers together. There was a lot of dovetails that needed to be glued. Um, and the liquid high glue gives you a little bit of extra open time, so that worked out pretty well. Uh, they all went together pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of putting glue on the pins and the tails and sticking everything together, and then that was pretty much it. Once I had the glue on all the dovetails, I went ahead and put everything together, and I used my calls uh, and clamps to squeeze everything together. Um, the glue does give you a lot of open time, but it also takes a long time for it to set up. So I let the I let the drawer set in the clamps for a day or so before I took the clamps off, and and uh, everything was fine after that. 
All right, well, for the last day or so, I've been working on the drawers, finishing them up, sanding the, the dovetails um, flush, uh, and I put these little trim pieces around here. kind of gives it a little frame and panel look to go with along with the other... Uh, the rest of the case, uh, the drawers go in pretty what, pretty nice. I got them all. I got a stop on the back so that it uh, it stops where it's supposed to. I got the holes marked for the knobs, which I haven't put on yet. Um, haven't drilled those holes yet. So uh, overall, it's um, uh, pretty much uh, complete. The only thing we have to do is um, take it apart now and and uh, take it out and. Spray some, uh, spray some lacquer on the case. Well, I wound up taking the piece outside and set up a canopy to keep the sun off of me while I was uh, spraying this piece. In the end, I put on five coats of lacquer. Uh, after the third coat, I scuff sanded it with some 320 and put some glaze on, which is basically the dye that I use to uh, dye the piece. It's wiped on a coated dye and then wiped off the excess and then once that dried, I went ahead and sprayed on two more coats of lacquer. I used a Minwax lacquer, which I've not used before. It worked, worked pretty well. So, in the end, uh, the five coats of lacquer on the uh, on the case and the uh, about the same number on the top and the shelf uh, uh, gave a real nice finish to this piece. Well, that's how I made this cherry buffet. Uh, it was a it was a fun project. Uh, it's been a while since I made anything this big, but it certainly was a lot of fun. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I'm always uh, interested in feedback. So, if you have any comments on the project or the editing or the video, please please feel free to leave them down below. Um, thanks for watching again, and please don't forget to subscribe.